Today on Artifactually Speaking, we talk about the fundamental building block of Mesopotamian civilization. There have been a lot of great inventions through time. Some have been absolutely fundamental, like stone hand axes and spear points, the plow, the wheel. But there's another one that came about that we don't often think about as much. It's one that allowed people to build in areas where stone and wood were not available, like Mesopotamia, and it is the humble brick. I'm Brad Hafford, archaeologist at the University of Pennsylvania, and for this episode of Artifactually Speaking, I'm in the field at the archaeological site of Lagash. Our site dates almost entirely to the early dynastic period, which is roughly 2900 to 2350 BCE. Now, bricks had already been invented by that point, so I am probably exaggerating the importance a little bit. People had been building with things before bricks anyway, the reed huts that had been built in the marshes in this area were very important and they worked well enough. But, of course, brick can last a lot longer than reeds. I'm reminded of the story of the three little pigs. First straw and then sticks and finally brick. Well, now, the development of architecture is not nearly so linear and it varies through time and space. But, in general, stronger materials are better for building, and people realize that. So, they start to make things, if they don't have the stone, they can kind of make a fake stone. But not all bricks are fired in a kiln, as we might think of today. Instead, the most common brick in Mesopotamia is just mud that is left to dry in the sun. Now, it can take different shapes, and it could be that the earliest mud bricks were kind of rounded, like an imitation of a stone. Now that's not really proven, but we do know that in the early dynastic period, a characteristic brick is one that we call plano-convex. And we call it that because it's flat on the bottom, but it's domed on the top, like a loaf of bread. And this brick that I'm holding is a so-called plano-convex brick that was found um, within this ephemeral structure next to our uh, kiln. As you can see, it's flat on one side and it has this kind of loaf bread shape, so kind of curved on the top. Um, and it's interesting because it's characteristic from the early dynastic period. And it may seem odd, how would they build with this when they don't really stack well? You would need a lot of mortar to keep them in place. But they did it, and in fact, they may have been experimenting with types of brick in order to find what worked best. Uh, so these are plain and convex bricks. They're quite small. Uh, let's see, they're kind of you know, gently rounded. Um, in this case, they just lay them flat and put a lot of mortar around them to complete the wall, but sometimes they're actually sort of lay on one side in a sort of herringbone way, um, which again, this is sort of a, an efficient way of, um, of building architecture and is actually very, very stable. Whenever you find a corner, you tend to find them placed one on top of the other, while as in the central points, you tend to find them in many different positions, but it is characteristic to find them in a herringbone pattern. So you can find them placed so in, in diagonal, um, in many different positions. I mean, one of the questions that still hasn't been uh, answered is why were they using this, this shape bricks? No, I mean, before that and after that, you already have rectangular bricks, which are, you know, it's, it's easier to build with that. You know, it's, it has this shape because there was, it was built, so it was uh, made with a certain frame, and then it was all, all the clay was packed, and then this is the, the shape of, like, the packing of the, of the clay over, over the frame. But there's an idea that at the beginning they used to be smaller and kind of more curved, and over time they became uh, flatter. And um, what we find is that when we enter the Akkadian period, um, we tend to lose, uh, we tend to not to find them again, um, and the bricks tend to be rectangular. So bricks aren't just building blocks. They are also stylistic and they change through time. This can help us understand something about the people who made them and how they built with them. And that's really our goal in archaeology, to understand the people of the time period. 
it can sometimes help us to date things as well because certain shapes were common in certain time periods. It's not always true, but in general, these styles change through time. So the plano convex brick tends to fade out at the end of the early dynastic period and we end up with rectangular or square bricks. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed learning about this brick with me. I'm Brad Hafford. Join me again next time on Artifactually Speaking.